is my nation, pledge your allegiance. All right, looks like we're live. What's up, everybody? Hopefully you can hear us good. Um, tonight, uh, well, first things first, um, go ahead and type in hashtag Lime into the comments, and that will um, get you in for a chance to win um, some cool prizes that will be given away tonight. What are we going to be giving away tonight, Ashley? You don't know? Okay, well, you'll figure, <laughs> you'll figure that part out. All right, anyways, tonight, uh, thanks for being with, with us, by the way. But uh, tonight, we're going to be going over my, uh, this is a 1984 FXR. It does have an SNS uh, aftermarket motor in it. But I picked this thing up for pretty cheap a couple of years ago. It's been sitting around. Finally got the parts together. Uh, to get this thing wrapped up, and uh, we're going to put a paint job on this thing. Uh, not tonight, but we're going to kind of go over the process of, um, you know, some of the supplies we're going to need. Um, also, we're going to go over uh, maybe possible designs that we're able to do. So maybe we'll do some mock-up with some fine line tape and maybe um, uh, maybe go through a few ideas that uh, and, and color schemes that we might want to go with. Um, a lot of times we'll, we'll take into account the, the color of the, uh, the motor, obviously the frame and, and, the, and the rims, and then try to put together the color scheme and the, uh, the graphics that we're going to want to do on this thing. So we're going to kind of go over that. Um, I'll, be, uh, I'll probably take the, paint, the parts off to you. It's pretty easy to take these parts off uh, real quick. And then we'll just kind of go over any kind of questions you guys have as far as prep work. Um, and probably like this, I said, the most important thing that we're going to talk about today is a supplies list. We need to know um, what paint, uh, how much paint, and the supplies we're going to need in order to get started. Now, um, the, the whole custom paint job in itself, um, it's going to take uh, some time and some materials, and sometimes it's a little overwhelming. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this into uh, different sections of, of, of a paint job. So right now, all we're going to do is worry about uh, uh, trying to get an idea of what kind of a graphic design that we're going to want to do. And then um, we're just going to worry about the materials to get it up to the paint uh, side of it. Um, since we don't really know, unless we decide exactly what we're going to do as far as a paint job goes, um, I'm still going to kind of mow it over and figure that out. But, but for right now, we're going to get a, a, a parts list together for like the primer, the sandpaper, um, the degreaser uh, and you know rags and stuff like that um, that we're going to need to be able to to get it to the point where it's all prepped to be able to start doing the graphics so um, cool uh, once again hit that hashtag lime into the comments and uh, let's go ahead and start this off with the with the giveaway Ashley what should, what should we give away we'll do a a combo pack of something what do you think Do the combo pack of sandpaper. Okay, which one? The the DA sandpaper? No, the black. Oh, the black carbide. Okay, yeah. sounds good. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and spin that wheel. Good luck, guys. Who do we got? Brian Walters, congratulations. Let's get this thing off. 
there's a little bit of grease on this side. I want to make sure I get it off. I'm going to lay any tape. Thanks to the mouse, we're down here today. <laughs> and for the next month or two until they're all dead upstairs. Now we got the traps set out. <laughs> the traps in the house, the traps here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, what I usually do uh, when I first start out, we got everybody here? Okay. Uh, first thing we're going to do is, let me go ahead and lower this. Let me get it to a height where I can manage to, to be able to lay out some graphics. Roman said, I saw your caddy on the interview with B Diamond. It looks sick. How much longer till the swap? Oh, man. I hope it's going to be this year sometime. There was a trick to this thing. Let me... John says, planning on doing my bagger. How much paint should I plan for? Fairing and, and stretch bag. Didn't hear me. Sorry about that, guys. I wanted to. Probably didn't hear my question. No, I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear out. absolutely nothing. John says, planning on doing my bagger, how much paint should I plan for? Fairing and stretch bags. Uh, it all depends on the paint job that you're doing. But a fairing, um, and it has stretch bags. Obviously, you're going to do your front fender, your tank, and your two side covers. Uh, it all kind of depends. But it, it seems like you're still good with quartz. Um, as far as the base coats go, and um, definitely with a gallon, going with a gallon of clear with the hardener. Uh, speaking of the, the clear coat, is we do have a new uh, one gallon clear coat out. Um, I think maybe do I have it right here? Nah, it's upstairs. But uh, we do have a new gallon of clear coat out that um, if you type in, in on Amazon, if you type in lime into the discount code, You'll get another ten percent off, so, um, and that's good for a couple of weeks from this date. Uh, yes, I think it's actually ten percent off that clear coat. Anyways, um, so yes, go with a gallon of clear. You're probably good with quartz. Um, it all depends on the graphics, you know. If you, if you're doing uh, candy paint, you're probably good with the um, just going with the tri pack um, or just buying the, the picking up the uh, four ounce of concentrate that you're going to need for that. Um, as far as flake goes, if you're flaking it. I would say two packs of flake, uh, but all kind of depends on the paint job. But you're probably good with quartz on the paint and gallons with the clear coat, and quartz, quartz with the primer. Troy Rocco uh, gave you a two dollars super chat and said, "Thank you for these wonderful videos." Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And then Roman said, "Actually, I should have said looked rad for the rad count." Which one looked rad? The caddy, because oh. B Diamond's video, he's counting all the times he says rat. Oh, yeah, yeah. I never know about that. Doug said, What do you think is a good price point for a custom metal flake paint box with mailbox? I mean, with some different designs. Um, it all depends on what you how you feel about it, but I would say, uh, it all depends. If you're if you're if you're uh painting it to sell it. The price is going to be a little bit cheaper. So if you're painting it to sell it, you know, three, four hundred bucks, five hundred bucks maybe. If you're painting it one off to uh, per the customer's specs, then it would be more on the seven hundred, eight hundred, up to a thousand because um, you're kind of building them a one of a kind kind of piece. But yeah, something that's pre made is usually just a little bit cheaper, in my opinion. But whatever you feel good about, you know. If you feel so good about a couple hundred bucks and you made a little bit of money, they don't take that much materials, really. So, when starting out, what do you look for when you're buying an air compressor? Is a 29 gallon too small? Um, I it all depends on the pump, 
on the air compressor. Um, you know, it's it's uh, depends on what also what you're painting. So if you're just painting motorcycle parts, it sounds like you might be okay. But it depends on the depends on the pump that's filling up the tank. Does that make sense? Um, and then maybe maybe I can show you mine what I have. I have just a double pump Harbor Freight. It was one of the bigger ones that they sold at the time. I don't think they sell them anymore, but you can still buy that double stage pump. So um, remind me, Ashley, before we're all done, that I'll show them our compressor real quick. Because we're just right here. And then uh, John from 17 Weeks and Paint said, appreciate all the knowledge you provide us. Yeah, thank you. And then someone, Mike said, will all of the Limeline cups work with the minigun? Uh, the Limeline disposable cups? Yeah. Is that what they're speaking of? Yeah, um, yeah you need the adapter, though. And we're, we are working on getting that adapter. So that green adapter piece that you'll see on the top of the gun to those to connect, connect to, you will need to get a smaller version of one of those. Um, but we are working on getting those, so we should have them within a month or so. What's the solids content on the Limeline clear coat? Uh, the one that just came out... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question, but I want to make sure I'm right. Uh, it's actually said it's a, right on the back of the can. Let me go grab it real quick. That's looking good though. I'm liking what's there. Let me tell you. Very important when it's ready to spray, uh, solids uh, content is 34% on the new. So this is an overall clear. This is a more budget friendly uh, clear coat. Um, this was, this, it, it sands, it polishes, it does everything you need to do start to finish, um, but definitely more budget friendly. If you want something a little bit nicer, that comes with this hardener right here. So we have a gallon and a quart. That's mixed at a, a four to one. And we do have the new, we have a new Glamour Clear coming out. And this is a two gallon kit. So um, part A, it's gonna mix two to one. And the solids content on this is Forty-eight percent. Once it's uh, once it's uh, it's ready to spray, it's forty-eight percent. Okay, <laughs> I answered that question, <laughs> and I'm out of breath. Uh, do you have a tip on opening stuck activator cap? Uh, I'm sorry. What was that? I say it one more time. Do you have a tip on opening a stuck activator cap? Um. Yeah. You just get a razor blade down there and trim around the edges, and then a flathead screwdriver. Yeah, those kind of, we are actually switching those um, particular caps with another cap, um, but that's going to be a couple months down the road. We're just getting rid of the, the inventory that we have. So yeah, sorry if those are kind of a pain in the ass, but they're talking about the plug you pull um, out of the uh, containers there. Sometimes they break off, but uh, we're hoping to fix that problem. Nothing wrong with the actual material inside, just the cap itself. Uh, first time watching tattoos on two says, what made you start this business that you do? Um, which business, I guess. Uh, yeah, maybe be more specific on that question. Which business? But, uh, yeah, I have been a painter of 20 years and, uh, yeah. What do you do around the gas field to keep it from bubbling up and killing well, let's see what this one looks like right here. I think there's a gas spill on both of these sides. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, these, this design right here of fuel bone is terrible. Look how dirty that gas tank is. 
Oh, that stinks. That smells terrible. Looks like I'm going to have to clean the inside of that as well. But um, yes, the, the fuel bunks that don't have the little lip right here, there's no lip right there. It just uh, it goes straight into paint. And, and as you can see, this little, it just seals right there on that. Yeah, it doesn't work very well. Um, we might have problems with this. You never know. Let's see how the other side looks. It's just something you have to deal with. I don't know the quick fix to that, but yeah, both these sides look terrible. We'll fix that up though and get that. I don't. Here's just kind of a rough idea of what um, a general layout I could possibly do. And what I'll do is I'll just snap some pictures of that. Um, and uh, really, if I had more of an idea of what exactly I'm going to paint on this, I would tape out more. Um, and But to be honest with you, I'm just drawing a blank. I, I really don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. Um, I'll take some suggestions and, and obviously, you know, process all that and see what I want to do. But uh, not sure. I'm not like in love with the the motor. I wish there was more black than the motor, but I'm not going to do anything with that. Um, but if we could accent um, and work with the paint along with um, some of the other things we have going on here, I'm going to leave the chrome cover for the um, the side cover there. Go ahead and leave that chrome. Uh, leave the, the some of the other accessories chrome as well. We do have a fairing on this that we mounted. These are like, these are super cheap. I think we got this off of eBay for like 110 bucks with the bracket. So pretty cool. Um, you can choose to, to paint the windshield if you want on these. Uh, it's, it's all personal preference. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and I'm not going to, I'm not gonna paint it. I like the fact that I can actually see through it a little bit. So um, I'm just gonna paint the base here we have the fender, what we got going on here. So this was also a eBay special that we uh, we picked up for a hundred bucks or so, but I don't know what the deal, this looks like an aftermarket deal we got going on here. I'm not sure if it's double taped. It doesn't look like, oh, there's LEDs under there. Ooh, LEDs, babe. Nice. <laughs> we'll rip those things out. And um, yeah, and it looks like that's probably just double-sided sticky tape, some kind of an aftermarket deal. Um, so yeah, we'll just, uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free. Um, let me, yeah, let's go ahead and you can go ahead and ask, ask those questions and I'll start pulling some of these parts off. Have you thought about doing a basic motorcycle paint job kit? Could you do a couple different sizes or have options to put in when ordering? Um, like a kit to say that one more time. Sorry, babe. Thought about doing a basic motorcycle paint job kit. Huh. That's a very interesting idea. Uh, we did think about putting some kits together that would include like, um, one of the, the hood panels and that would come with everything you needed to do to complete that project. Uh, but that's a very interesting idea. I like that. The hard thing is, is you really don't know how much paint. You know, so. Justin said, in one of your previous slides, you recommended a 0 0.5 tip for beginners to airbrushing. Could you explain why? Uh, a 0 0.05 tip? Yes, because you can get a smaller tip as well. Um, that's fine. But the, the little bit bigger tip has less problems with clogging. Like getting uh, particles stuck in it and getting, getting clogged. Oh, there's actually a, a bolt behind there. Look at that. Bumpy gave you a $10 super chat and said, I have my little 10 by 20 garage all clean and ready to do my old sled. Oh, yeah. Right on. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate that. Thanks, Bumpy. This sucker had a nut on the back of it. How would you fix a base coat paint run versus a clear run? Uh, well, if you're running your base coat, you're definitely spraying it way too wet um, or you have it over reduced too much. So um, basically you would sand it down you'd sand it smooth. And then uh, there's a chance that you might even have to reprimer it. Is there 
an advantage to black candy versus base coat? Yes, yeah, so black candy is transparent. Base coat covers. So if you're doing drop shadows or um, anything that you're wanting to darken up and making it transparent, that's that's what you would use. But you're not going to use a black candy on an overall paint job. Like you're not going to flake something and then cover it all with black candy. That's not. I mean, it would be. It wouldn't be worth your time. It would be better just to paint it all black and then put a little light dusting of metallic over the top because it's going to be almost the same thing. Rocket Man said, my, Rocket Man said got my 1.4 Pro the other day waiting for the rain to clear here in SoCal so I can fire up that bad boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's know how it goes. Can you ship the clear to California? Yes, it is a very good question. It is a, uh, a 2.1 VOC compliant so it can ship uh, pretty much anywhere the however when we do the, the high solids um, that's not going to be able to go to Hawaii or Alaska unfortunately Hopper said that tank needs to go to the radiator shop to be cleaned and lined yes it does absolutely do you think putting a little bit of clear epoxy around the gas fill would work? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't really know the answer to that question. Um, it could work, yes. Um, yes, I've never really dealt with that. When you flake, do you use the inner coat clear or do you use 2K clear? Uh, when I flake, I use 2K clear. Um, Cause I feel like it, so it actually lays the flake down smoother and it's less work um, when it comes to sanding it smooth. Cause you need to get that flake sanded smooth before you can move on with graphics. So you need to pile up enough clear coat on that to be able to cut that down without getting into your flake and make it smooth so your tape will stick, your next layer is smooth. If I'm going to put candy over silver leaf, should I put down inner coat before the candy? I'll uh, say that one more time. I kind of lost you. Sorry. If I'm going to put candy over silver leaf, should I put down inner coat before the candy? Not necessarily, no. What vinyl do you use for the stencils? It's Oracle 631. Yes. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, you memorize now? Yep. <laughs> what PSI do you run your airbrush and how long can you wait before clearing over candy without adhesion issues? Um, well, the second answer to that question is um, I wouldn't wait longer than a week on the candies before um, putting some kind of a clear coat on there. Um, if, you, if you have if you did happen to wait longer than a week, um, layer the clear coat on lightly to start. Make sure you get a, a couple of uh, tack coats on there. To, uh, that sometimes that could help the, the adhesion process as well, instead of um, just burying it real quick, you know. Bubba says the basic uh, paint kit for the bikes could include primer, paint, clear form of sandpaper, tape, and such. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> what did you say? I can tell you weren't listening. <laughs> I'm working on this bolt. <laughs> it's being a pain in the butt. I got <laughs> the, it done. The basic paint kit for the, that he's saying, the bike uh, paint kit could include oh, okay. primer, paint, clear, assortment of sandpaper, tape, and such. Yes, that is, uh, that's a great idea. And we also thought about actually doing a whole, like, a, a beginner package as well that would have a paint gun. I don't know. There's a lot of variables. Can yes, you, that's a, I love that idea, though. Yes, thanks for throwing that out there. Can you metal flake over tractor paint? Metal flake over crackle paint? Tractor. Oh. Well... Yeah, you would be able to. You have to make sure you scuff it down. 
um, and have good, you have good adhesion there, but uh, yeah, it's just, I don't see a problem with that. It's probably an enamel or, or something of that sort. Sixteenths. I need this guy. Do you reclear the bottoms of tank and fenders every time you clear over layers and graphics? Uh, good question. Uh, no, uh, I really don't. Not every time. Now, if it's a if it's a raw fender like this one, make sure I'm spinning this right. Yeah. Um, if it's a raw fender like this one, I'm gonna primer it underneath. And then when I do have my first coat of base coat, whatever the main color is going to be, usually black, uh, I'll go ahead and spray it black. And then um, it won't get clear coat again until the last, the last go around of clear. So all the other times, usually what I'll do is I'll usually set a fender on a stand, paint it on a stand. And when I'm all finished with the last uh, few glow coats of clear coat, I'll hang it up. So that way I can spray underneath. How many eagles are necessary for my FXR to run well? How many eagles? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, this thing's probably, this thing does run though. That's a good thing. <laughs> we got it running. You got to get it running before you paint it. I mean, come on, you're doing it backwards at that point. So I said, by now you should have a list of frequent. Frequently asked questions, laugh out loud. That's, That's okay, we don't mind. I have been painting for five months. Is that normal for a first timer? Five months? Yeah. Uh, first timer to start charging. Is that what that means? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's normal to, to be your first day. Really? I mean, it's a... Uh, but yeah, after five months, I feel like it depends on how hard you really went at it. Yeah. I don't know why I lowered this thing just to bend down to take the fender off, but whatever. I don't know either. Um, if you use a silver base coat, does it have to be metallic or can it just be silver before you shoot the flakes? Um, well, usually silver does have a metallic in it. It might be a really fine metallic. Uh, if not, it would be considered gray, which is just black and white mixed. Um, so yes, you can spray flake right over silver. That's fine. Yes, it does. I prefer to spray the lime line over black base coat and because I feel like it has more sparkle. But if you're spraying like big flake, like 0.25 or whatever it is, or 0 0.025 flake, um, you're best probably starting with a silver base because you're going to, the flakes are so big. It's going to be hard to get full coverage and then you're going to get like a speckled salt and pepper kind of look. <clears throat> do your lime lime candies come ready to spray or do they have to be reduced? See, everything needs to be reduced. Everything, everything that lime lime sells, it's not ready to spray. I think the whole, now I'm sorry with the whole ready to spray thing, but how does, how do they know what you're using to spray? Does that make sense to you, Ash? I don't know. If it's coming... Yeah, like if it needs to be thicker, thinner, as you mean. I mean, the only option you have is to really thin it thin out, it more out. If you want. Right. But but you're going to... What they don't understand is you need thinner paint when you're spraying out of an airbrush. You need thicker paint when you're spraying out of a paint gun. Depends on your air pressure. It depends on what you're doing. So the fact that they're choosing your viscosity for you, it's it seems crazy. The whole ready to spray um the thing is just crazy i can understand if he doesn't if it's not concentrate form that's fine I and mean, if it just needs to be reduced that's fine but yeah sorry anyway i don't understand about that now two's on two said bought your fine line tape as well your sounder and love it right thanks man appreciate that yeah thanks for the support guys can you use curatex water-based candy 2.0 on Base coat flake. Uh, base coat flake. Yes, you can. Yep. Yeah, you're fine with that. I did not see the long sleeve on the website. Did I miss it somehow? Uh, your shirt. I don't. You're wearing two layers. I'm wearing two layers. Yeah. He has a shirt. Yeah, it's a. T he has a shirt under the t-shirt. <laughs> it doesn't really look like it, but you do. My Jesus jammies. 
Well, they're the wrong color. <laughs> Swampy, said, dude, <laughs> Swampy said, dude, you need some power ratchets and a small power impact. Yeah, I know. I almost got this one, though. And really, I don't know why I lowered the lift just to bend down. I'm a, I'm yeah. a painter. Yeah, I'm not sure why you did that. Josh said, Josh said, I am backwards as crap then. I finished painting last week and just got my my motor yesterday. Left out loud. Well, I'm not saying that that's like, I mean, I'm not saying you're doing it wrong, but if you're just painting something that doesn't run, I don't know. Just painting an old car that just doesn't move. But no, everybody has their way. I totally understand. I have having a way with this fender right now. Uh, really making me mad. <laughs> Baba says with the package, it would just, with a basic paint gun along with everything else, would be a really good option instead of everyone piecing it all together and possibly forgetting things. It would really help a lot of people out. Yeah, I like that idea. What is the air velocity of an un unladen swallow? Unladen swallow? Huh, good question. <laughs> Did you finish orange and black bike? Yes, it's all done. Yeah, and he picked it up two days ago? Yeah, it's gone. Now we got a metal flake one coming up next. Besides, <laughs> this one will just be on Thursdays. How much flake did you use for a helmet? I got it. Huh? How much flake? Yeah. You only need a little bit. So you would just, uh, you just pour a little bit out of the package. Or you can flake like probably 10 helmets at once. Okay, there we go. I got that bad boy off. Um, Someone said, I'm confused on the question. Line Line doesn't sell candy paint. You need inner coat or base coat to blend in, then reduce. Am I missing something? We don't sell candy paint? He's, I, he's, I oh. guess he doesn't know about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We sell candy paint. Yes, so we sell candy concentrate that would mix with clear base coat or inner coat clear. And then you would reduce it out with urethane reducer to make it sprayable. Once again, that mixture, you can play with that. You can make it more potent with that concentrate. You can, uh, you can uh, dilute it out more to do more coats to get things more even. Um, and then obviously reduce it to however you're going to spray it. If you're spraying with an airbrush, it needs to be thinner. If you're spraying it out of a big spray gun, uh, obviously it needs to be thicker. Okay, I did it. I got, I got the rear fender off. So far, so good. We'll Swabby work on said, this front fender real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Swabby said, plus they charge full price for reduced urethane. What a ripoff. Yeah, reduced already, too. Mike said, my minigun just came in yesterday. Haven't used it yet. I'm going to Ohio to Daytona tomorrow. Thanks, Adam Nash. They all be looking for the black and orange bike down there. Oh, yeah, right on, dude. Well, you won't be able to miss that, yeah. I'm afraid. <laughs> this front bender is going to be way easier. Can you post a pic of your cousin's bike together on the members page? Uh, the, the orange one? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any pictures right now, but I can do that. Yep. I'll have to text him and see. Uh, but yeah, it's down and it's headed down to Daytona right now. From what I understand. Have you ever used that heat changing paint yet? Where yep. you see the image under the paint once you use hot water. I use it a lot. Maybe you can try it on a live show and give your thoughts. Yeah, I actually have tried that. Uh, there's a couple of different ones. But I haven't really experimented too much, but I did check it out. Have you ever done the fingerprint pattern before as a paint job? And is there any way you can make a video showing how to do it. I want to paint one of my tattoo machines and my rolling box. Yeah, it's pretty easy to do. You just you just tape it out with tape, with a fine line tape. Um, I do actually, if you watch the how to, how to panel paint video, it's one of my more popular videos. Wait a minute, does it have that in there? Huh. 
I might I might be wrong. Sorry. I thought I I thought yeah, I should do. You know what? I probably will do a video on that. <laughs> I thought they had it already. I was all talking. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna do that now. I said I had it. We're gonna do what? I'll write it on your list. Okay, go ahead. Fingerprint video. Okay. Pretty easy to do. How many coats of clear? How many coats of clear do you use to spray gold leaf? And do you prefer spraying on the sides or applying it with a brush? Uh, spray on and spray on the sides. That's what I always do. And then. If you're using the lime line sizing glue, the only option is to spray it on. If you want it to look right. Uh, and what was the second question? That was, that was the two part question, right? Um, the first one said, um, how many coats of clear to bury it? Oh, yes. Um, I like to clear it twice. So I would lay the leaf down three to four coats of clear, sand it smooth, and then another three coats of clear be able to smooth it out um, because you do get a little bit of an edge there and I always feel like two go rounds not necessary though if you're gonna go if you're just painting a, painting a skateboard um, just pour coats of clear over the top and you're probably good what's your opinion on the Createx candy uh, it actually works good it um, that's the great thing about it is it works really good it's really slow to dry and Uh, slow to dry, and then um, it takes a lot of layers to get the job done. It does clog up the airbrush more because it is a naturally it's a waterborne. Waterborns have that tendency to to clog up more and to dry up faster at the tip. Um, but uh, it works, and you can definitely just remember it's going to take more time. So if you're watching me. With my coats, just remember you're going to have to wait a lot longer and you're going to have to be much more patient when you're applying the paint because it's just, it just takes so long to dry. You have to just do light coats, let it build up. Where can I see pictures of full bikes you've painted? I need inspiration for my FXR. Uh, Instagram would be the best place, but I really don't have much as far as photos go. Of the full bikes together. Of the full, huh? of the full bikes together, and I really should. But um, yeah, just video. That's the wrong one. Uh, in addition to putting together a kit, you could put together a list for each type of bike slash job. For example, I'm going to shoot my dagger with silver flake, silver flake, and then candy, and just including a list of supplies that you would need for that. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna make a list for this thing. And to be honest, the list that we're gonna make for this is gonna pretty much be for most bikes, you know? Maybe a little bit less. We do have a fairing on this, but tank and two fenders is what's generally what is painted the most. Can you use matte clear over leaf? Yes, you can. Yeah, if you're going to want to clear it with regular clear coat first, with regular 2 coat, 2K clear coat, because the matte uh, clear goes on very thin. So it's, it goes on so thin that it wouldn't allow enough room to bury. So you never want to use the satin clear coat on any kind of graphic that hasn't been that hasn't been uh, clear coated with 2K clear coat. So you need to use this long one. Patricia said, my granddaughter is starting to get into oh Okay, Patricia said, my granddaughter is starting to get into the painting. She's going to be 10 years old, but she loves what her dad does with the painting. That's so awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> I hope our grandkids catch on. I talked to uh, our oldest grandson, Asher, and he likes the silver leaf. 
he just, well, he mostly likes it to fly up in the air and float away, but he's all about it. He likes to roll it, use the roller and the brush. He kind of understands the concept. What is your Instagram? I'm sorry? What, what is your Instagram? Uh, time Warp Custom Paint. Time Warp Custom Paint, you got that? You can, you can yeah. James sent a $10 super chat. Oh, thanks, James. Thanks, James. Tattoos on two said, I painted my bike with mutant crystals paint and used your candy over top. Looks amazing. Oh, you use the mutant crystals. Mutant. I'm going to actually... We I'm were, actually going to do that video again. Yeah, we were thinking about doing that again. We were just talking about that. <laughs> Do you go wet on wet when applying this satin clear over 2K? No. Mr. C said, actually, Adam needs an air ratchet for his birthday. <laughs> I have one, actually. He's home. What else he needs, but I just don't know where to get it or where to find it, is he needs a... New stand, it sounds like. A what? New tank stand. Or tank stand. <laughs> like you know, a uh, tank holder so that you can paint it upstairs no, when no, you no. drop it. No, I love that stand. Yes. Yeah, I don't care if it drops a tank. That's a good stand. I have everybody asking me where I get that thing from. I know. <laughs> I'm not getting rid of it. I know. See, this is why I can't ever get him anything. He just likes the same old what he has. Have you ever painted an all black candy on bike? Uh, no, that's that's not that's uh, not something that you should probably do. Um, it's just not. Uh, is this one? Or not? Yeah, it's just not really meant for that. If you're gonna do that, I think we talked about that earlier. It's better just to paint it all black, and then put a little bit of uh, silver uh, base coat or uh, just to sprinkle on top of it. Or you can also mix a little bit of the silver into the black itself. That will show up. But um, doing it all black candy, uh, just not probably about to go. So, sorry if you plan on doing that. <laughs> you can try it still. Don't let me stop you. Just finished my first customer's bike. Of all my samples, he, chooses, he chose Speedo Coat Jet Black. I was hating like fighting eyes and nibs and undersold myself thinking there wouldn't be so much work in between coats. Mm, yeah. just needs to be a bit larger on the paint stand that you have yeah it is a little uh wobbly too um it's the only other little annoying thing about it but yeah if that you know to be honest i usually don't paint tanks that big well i am actually this one's gonna be that big <laughs> wait a second yeah, never mind. josh said heard you on Pepper speed podcast great job thanks for all the help i'll be starting my first set of pins this week all right yeah, let us know how that goes. Hopefully better than me taking this thing off. <laughs> What's your advice on top size when you're top coating or clear coating? Uh, top size? Is that what that was? Yeah. Did you say top size? What's your advice on top size when you're top coating or clear coating? Huh. I guess I don't understand that question. Maybe he'll ask again. Yeah, you can ask again another way. Maybe I'll get it. But sometimes my brain don't work. What year is the FXR? Do you remember? I told, I said it. Nope. So the 1983. Dang, that's old. Just kidding. 
Wait you? a minute, I'm sorry. This is an 84. Uh, I was wrong. 84. It's one year newer. 84. Uh, what do you think about doing marble on this FXR? I like that idea. I really like marble, marbleized texture, when it's two colors that are similar. So say like you were to do a, a blue and then a light blue, marbleized on top of the blue. I really like that look um, because there's less contrast there. And it's like a detail that you have to get closer to look at and see it. It's like a, you don't really see it until you get close. I like that look. So uh, rather than like a marbleized that's done like black and silver. Although you could put a candy over that. It's kind of the same effect, really. Have close. You, Not really, though. Have you ever painted a tank chrome? No. Uh, yeah, I tried. It's horrible. I can't do it. Give up. <laughs> he, Give up on that one. He asked the question, he meant what tip size do you prefer when clear coating and finishing coat? Oh, uh, either a 1.3 or 1.4. You could even use the, uh, the 0.8 too. That's, the smaller the better if you ask me. It depends on what you're spraying though. If you're spraying small parts. The one, uh, the point eight is going to get you, get you by all day long. If you're spraying your whole car, that's not going to do it. It's going to do the graphics. Kevin, we met him in Pennsylvania, remember? He said, how often oh, yeah. do you get to paint your stuff? I'm finally able to do one of my own. All right. Uh, not very often. The last one was my other 80s bike, uh, my shovel head. And that was like, how long ago? That was like four years ago. So yes, finally, finally, paid my own bike. Kevin said, hey, I graduated in 84. Whoa, <laughs> that's it. Bubba said, old, Ashley, you're making some of us feel old now. I was joking because I was born in 1982. So I'm totally joking. <laughs> Not all one bit. Yeah, you'd be nice. Be nice to those viewers. We need them. 84, first year of the Evo. Uh oh, yes. Well, that sounds correct. That's what Swampy said. Uh, Purple Goddess said, sitting here masking parts while watching you going to start painting this weekend. All right on. Nice. That would be. Yeah, turn your TV on in the garage and it'd be perfect. Yeah, we'll be doing every every live uh, for now on until we finish this. Um, it's just going to be a series. Either that or until the me mice are caught. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going back up next week. You know that, right? No, we're yes. not. Well, yeah, we're right down here. we got to get the parts off and we're done. We'll get those suckers, babe. We're going to get them. Yeah. I've already warned them. <laughs> <laughs> you warned them. Oh yeah, they're, they're great listeners. I took away. I took away the nuts. These nuts. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Ryan Christensen sent you us a twenty dollars super chat. Oh uh, yeah, coffee tomorrow. You coffee tomorrow, babe. Thanks. Man, right. this is metric. And swampy. Ah, it's terrible. James says James here sent. Just sent a SC 50 plus years in custom painting from last week. I received your roller size and brush yesterday. Love it. I still do glass gilding and glue chip glass. Glass. Is that gilding? Yeah, gilding. Yep. Gilding? Yep. Is that like painting stained glass or what is gilding? Uh, gilding is, Le um, it's leaf yes. on the glass? It's leaf. It's not even on glass, though. It's on anything. It would be considered gilding. Uh -huh. Like what we do is considered gilding okay i've heard that word before but i, I never i mean i heard it on the lives or people talking yeah. it's not as widely it. used in the automotive industry i think they use it more in sign painting and stuff like that maybe maybe somebody can chime in they know more about probably james james he knows about gilding let's hear it kevin said i'm laying flames on my tank what a pain in the ass yeah it just takes some getting used to just tape them out a few times the nice thing is just tape, you can pull it off and 
Jeep when we were talking to Kevin. You were painting a Jeep or your daughter's Jeep, so glad that's over and you can paint your own. Uh, Tattoos on Two said, what bikes do you hate to paint and what bikes are a breeze? Um, I love Shopper Tanks. Chopper Tank and Fender, which that's what actually I have a customer's bike that's up next uh, that I'm doing just a tank and a fender. Um, I'll have a full video on that. It won't be on the lives, but uh, that's what I enjoy doing the best. Uh, I hate baggers, really. Um, there's just, a, I don't really hate them because they're a bagger. Uh, it's just because it's a lot of parts and, and it just seems like if it's for a customer, it uh, takes a lot in order to get them finished and it takes a lot of material and uh, I don't know, they just take too long. It's hard to make money off of them, I feel like, too, unless you're charging a premium. Definitely don't take those things apart because I can barely get this thing apart. But I got it. This, this bearing's coming off right now. There's a couple. Josh. Josh was born in 82 and so was Bubba. Bubba was on April 7th. Josh was April 8th. Your birthday was April 10th, but in, not in 82. No. You're not cool. I think I got this off. Let's go. Oh, I got one more. I thought I was done. Oh, I got two more. Jay said, Ashley will be in a bee suit next week. <laughs> Swampy said, I was 100 miles offshore on an oil rig in 84. I think that's my dad was too. <laughs> How's it going? First live I've been able to catch. I found the channel by seeing your painting on the building off Main Street. Oh, yeah, right on. Sweet. Yeah. It oh. might not be long. That'll be covered up. City so will give me, give me problems. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I didn't have full approval to paint that on there, but I'm working it out. Oh. Shady Vito said, I had an Evo Sportster and an Evo Fat Boy. Love Bell's motors. Yeah, good motor. MC Man said, more. the electric traps with peanut butter bait works awesome getting mice and rats. I think that's what we got. Yeah, it's not electric. It's like the manual one. But I put cheese in it. That's the only thing, and I think it's starting to not be stinky enough. I think I'm gonna because we haven't caught one yet. It's been like a few days. I think we need to move to the peanut butter. I'm not moving nothing. I. She wouldn't even touch the trap when it was brand new. No. Heck no. John said, a couple weeks ago, you said you hate doing tour packs. Just finished one for my brother-in-law, and what a pain in the butt it was. <laughs> I know. I under now I understand. Let's see. I understand why you say that. Yeah, and painting them black, that's just icing on the cake right there. Because you got to polish it, and it's just like getting the edges all polished again. It's so hard. Man, Tattoos on two said, if you guys ever come to Pennsylvania, look me up. I'll give oh, you a oh. tour of my custom oh. shop. Called Twisted Impression Shop. Oh, badass. Yeah, we were there uh, not too long ago. Dave M said, I took almost all of 1984 off touring North America with my first wife in a camper van. How cool is that? Yeah, way fun. Do you always double leaf? I do on stuff that's really important. Was I supposed to do this this way? Let's see here. Do you off copper leafing in a oh. one inch roll like the one inch white gold and silver you have? Oh, do you have copper leafing? No, only the silver and the gold. Oh, no, we do have copper. In the roll? Oh, no. Yes, no, I'm not in the roll. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what do I want to do? Oh, okay. I see how he has Kevin said, have. yes, I am. She's close to finishing it, and I get my garage back. Woohoo! Almost right. done with the Jeep. Alright, got that sign off. I'm gonna act like I know what I'm doing here. 
Captain said, I got a big wheel bagger coming in this weekend. A lot of molding and fiberglass work. Here we go. Brian said, Molding and fiberglass? Yeah. That's the only thing you can add that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Hey, just make sure that you're... Just make sure you're charging appropriately. And then if there's problems down the line, like, oh man, like maybe you discover like this is going to be a lot more work. But just be upfront with the customer and let them know before you even start the work that way. They don't need, they don't need to be surprised by extra charges, but it happens all the time. You know what I mean? You don't know what you're really getting yourself into until you start sanding this stuff down. If it's bare metal parts, you can see what, what, what's going on, you know, obviously that rear fender. But for instance, this tank, this tank's been repainted. It's probably been repainted a couple of times, who knows? And what kind of paint they used, we don't know. So um, in, the, in the process of prepping this, you, you never know the problems that could arise uh, from, from just sanding and getting that prepped. You could, you could run into a small hairline crack. They're like, oh, what's that? You know, you prime it maybe, and then there'll be a crack there. And you'll notice the body filler from previous is all the way cracked through. You have to, to get that out. So um, when you're working on parts that are not bare metal and are not stock, just make sure you make the customer aware that stuff could happen. We don't know. You can bury a whole mountain of sins underneath some body filler. So you never really know what's going on. Tell you prep it. Okay. Well, am I going to try to take this tank off or what? Crowbar says, hey, hey, Crowbar here. You guys rock watching from Chicago. Oh, yeah, right on. Mr. C said, Ashley, did you get decon for the shop? You have some, whatever you have out here. What? What do you have to get the mics out here? Kill them. The decon, right? Decon, yeah. See, I think that's what we got. Jordan said, while you're teaching us about painting, I could recommend a couple channels that would help you with your mechanical skills. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be struggling a bit. Uh, see, well, the, see, the thing is, is usually his buddy does this part. Yeah. Ryan, I'm pampered. Ryan, yeah. Ryan does this part. I almost called him. him for this part, too, but I was like, no, I can handle it. He almost called him to see if he wanted to come on the live and do it, but then... And he, I could just stop. I could just talk, and then work but yeah well, I don't know. we'll see how this tank goes i might i might just uh i might surprise you guys here <laughs> you guys should do pa for gettysburg bike week oh. that sounds awesome gettysburg is that what you said gettysburg yeah. was that like where gettysburg was out didn't we go there we were in Pennsylvania, but I don't think we went to Gettysburg. Oh, yeah, that's right. We didn't go there, huh? Mm -mm. Gilding is an, another term for laying 23 care on glass. Not as prevalent as years ago. Doctors, lawyers, professional buildings used to have a lot of glass gilding. It always draws a crowd. Hmm. I bet. We know Mr. Oz does that on glass. Here yeah, we does. I don't think I see him do that. He's a cool dude. So I think we're all in agreement that you were going to come to Florida for your first class, right? I think that's where most people were. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, no, I'm actually, um, well, I don't plan on teaching anywhere. I am going to the yeah, uh, you had said if they got enough together and had a place, we would go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said that. I'm here to witness. I did say that. I did say that. He's just trying to talk about, but he's not going to do that right now because yeah, he has something right. else on his mind. Because in a few weeks, you're going to where? Brushmasters. Yeah. In the uh, Lake House. That'd be cool, right? Sounds awesome. Painting in paradise. The seat, it has a little hinge right there. Best thing ever. See that? Nice. Okay. Have you ever metal flaked your motorcycle rims? I 
have it. Uh, you know, just remember, you're going to have to get that the flake to smooth out. Um, so you're going to have to clear them a couple of times and try to sand them smooth. But man, that would look good. Pull off that brown. Captain Custom Paint said, I have just started raising my prices. My name is starting to get out there with great reviews. Yep. Swampy said, it's easier taking parts off than putting freshly painted parts back on. Oh, yeah, it's a completely different story. That's, uh, you gotta, definitely gotta treat it different. Jason said, first time painting a bike. Thank the Lord it's mine. Eight pieces in all, including a headlight, Callan radio, radiator, shroud, five months later, about to cut and buff on Saturday. Fingers crossed. Oh, right on. You're already there, huh? Phase three. That's what cut and buff would be. Phase one would be getting them all ready for paint. Shutter. Phase two would be painting it. Phase three would be getting it polished. Shutter said, how would you repair copper leaking that has come loose after this had been clear coated? Uh, sand it all the way off. I think he's talking about his bike. I know he is. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was kind of a secret ask. What, but I... <laughs> what copper leaf? <laughs> oh, shit. Cheddar, after this lift is empty, if it ever is, we'll pull that sucker on here and we'll do the same thing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, I know there's a little bit of steel in here. If you don't have oh, any yeah, metal, if you don't have any metal showing, what primer do you use? Uh, you can just use sandable primer at that point, and we're going to kind of go over that uh, right after I pop this tank off. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to pull this off first. Josh said, "I'm more terrified to polish my bike than I was to paint it." Yeah. Oh yeah, that's uh, I can I feel you there. Yeah, it's an art form in it, on its own, really. As I say, when you first start custom painting, it's okay to learn that first. But you're going to have to learn how to polish at some point. Um, and it's just a, it's a whole different thing. It's not like custom painting at all. It's more like prep work, but harder. Came right off. Look at that. What else we got here? Huh. Wow, this is really crappy. Look at that. Jeez. What's the worst job you can think of you did as in as in it was just a disaster and needed more work than you thought? Mm, I've done some theme bikes that that weren't very fun. Um, other than that, um, I can't think of anything off mine. Um, yeah, but I've done some, like, uh, some theme bikes that I've done off of movies, which is really tough and a lot of work. I would say that was, that's probably been the worst. Oops. Oh, okay. There's that. Chad said, Florida sounds awesome. I have the place, plenty of land, shop, and a paint booth. Oh man, okay, sweetening the deal. Might have to happen. And I have a buddy in Florida too. Uh, Billy. Billy's in Florida? Bill, Billy, Billy Brush is in oh, Florida. Oh, I was like, whoa. Well, no, no, not Billy. Oh yeah, Billy is there. Any way to control 2K odor? I live in a condo and neighbor complaints are a concern. Mm. Yeah. Probably do that somewhere else. So I would, uh, I would, you know, maybe you could paint all the rest there, and then um, maybe find somebody's garage or something. But other than that, there's nothing that really replaces clear coats. Like there's not really a waterborne product that I know of that um, that completely re replaces clear coat. 
Oh man, this thing ain't budging. Come on. Swampy said, Adam, you need to scallop the jugs and the head on that FXR. How do I do that? Douglas said, take your stand-up jet ski with you to have a Sue. <laughs> how do you know? How do you know? Oh yeah, he saw it. Uh, he must have saw it the other day. Yeah. Yes. I think that's what he does. That, um, if I remember right, that's what Douglas does is he paints. Or he was painting his, his jet, ski? jet ski. Yeah. Yes. I have a Man, pretty I good love memory. those things. I have a pretty good memory. I'm pretty sure that's what he does. Or he was doing. Yeah, I actually would have painted mine, but it came with um, like a wrap on it that's actually in really good shape. And it has my favorite number on it, which is crazy. That's just the way I bought it. Dave M says, so what's tonight's beverage, Ashley? It's actually a chai, it's a chai, a hot chai because it's cold down here. So I have pretty cold down here. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, I got one of these bolts off. Oh. I think in order to pull, let's see, I don't know if I really, huh. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if I'm going to mess with this tank because I might just uh, talk to my buddy. Where do you get the CSI compound since I can't get it on Amazon anymore? Oh, uh, you can't get it on Amazon anymore, huh? Very interesting. I wonder why. I think I might just need to put a, uh, let's try that. Yeah, you can go to, I guess you can go to his website. Huh, interesting. Maybe I should talk to him about that. Wow, this is just like rusted. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that was rusted shut. This size is half inch. Yeah, um, Sloppy said with a Dremel and small bit, he'll Instagram pics to you to do the scallop things he was talking about. The what? With a Dremel and a small bit is how you do the scalloped edges. He said he'll Instagram send you Instagram pictures of it. Oh, okay. Huh. Is that kind of like diamond cutting? Okay, whatever I did there didn't work. I didn't even, uh, that didn't do nothing. And I really, uh, I was going to act like I knew what I was doing, but I kind of don't when it comes to this. I, it looks like I'd be able to take off these wires. The tank's ready to come off. It's literally ready to come off. The problem is there's six wires there, a speedo cable here. I can get that off. And I just don't know what to do with this stuff. Like, I don't want to take it apart because I would know I won't get it back together correctly. So, uh, but yeah, if you, if you were to take it apart, obviously take a picture. Um, uh, I'm going to have my friend help me. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave up. I almost got it, though. I wanted to make him proud. CSI, from what I heard, there was a supply issue that should be cleared up soon, they said. Oh, okay. Are you thinking about coming out with your own cutting compounds and polishes? No. Please don't ever sell your products ready to spray. Oh, my. Let's see. When you don't have control over your viscosity, it's the kiss of death for a custom painter. It is. It doesn't make any sense. Especially when you're new and you're buying it and then it's just going to discourage you. But yeah, well put though. That is the kiss of death. <laughs> There's so many of them when you're brand new. Should be two bolts on each side of that tank and it should, and it should split off. Two bolts on the side? Let me check. Do you know if the Speedo Coat Base Coat Binder SMR-001 
base coat binder is similar to your clear base coat, I'd rather buy buy it by the gallon than the quart. Uh, it's I can't really vouch for it, but um, it sounds like it is. Big Jerry said, "That's cool out of you. You're still an awesome painter." <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you understand. Hope I didn't let you down. I'm gonna check these two bolts though. You said there's two bolts somewhere. Well, there's these two bolts. I got those two. I got the tank loose. But to get the, I really want to get this whole instrument cluster. Won't the whole speed cluster come off as one piece? Yeah, it looks like it will. Let me. Is that long sleeve tea going to be available? <laughs> Maybe we need long sleeve teas, huh? Yes, two shirts. I'm not going to give up quite yet. Hold on. I might be able to. He has two shirts on. That's the t-shirt, and then he's wearing a, a thermal shirt underneath it. There is two bolts right here. Let's see. Oh. oh. Good painter. Lousy wrencher. <laughs> That's a swap he said. <laughs> and then he said, laugh out loud. Well, it's a true story. All the wires and speedometer should be left behind when you remove the tank. Yeah, that is, yep. There are a couple of bolts on the dash plate and it should separate as one unit and you can take the tank off. Yeah, there's two bolts right under here, it looks like. Are you spray? Oh, they are. Are you spray painting tonight? Negative. No, we're a ways away from spray painting. Uh, but uh, no, I can't get that off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you we should have gone right. I'll ask him tomorrow. He'll help me. Okay. Come on, Adam. You can do it. I wish I could. He sure likes to drop stuff. <laughs> I know it bothers me when I can't do stuff, but I'm just not going to mess with it because sometimes it's just better to leave it. Uh, for the they like the long sleeve, so maybe I need to tell. Maybe I need to order long sleeves. Maybe, maybe. Okay, let's uh, let's make a let's give something away. No one likes a quitter. Oh, I tried guys, I tried. Almost had it. We got the fender off, front fender, rear fender. And uh, we got the fairing off, and we got the paint disconnected. But uh, yeah, this is, this instrument cluster needs to come off all at once. And I'm guessing it's these two bolts that are underneath there that are like PB blaster, baby. Every yeah. shop should have PB. It yep, it needs PB. Yep. And I don't know where I don't I don't even know where he keeps that. Don't. So. Did you get the bolt on the bottom of the tank under the seat? Yeah, two of them. Great try, Adam. It is what it is. Like, it's right there. Like, it's, I pretty much took it off. Like, I, I feel like you can count this as taking it off. Because if it lifts off like that, the other thing, there's a bunch of fuel in there, too. And I'm pretty sure I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was actually already worried about it. I was like, I'm going to spill fuel all over. I'm guessing, I'm guessing what to do is to uh, unhook the hose and then have this off. The pet cock off. So let's give something away, and then we're going to get to uh, making a material list, and we're going to go over what exactly we need to do to prep these parts to get them ready for paint next week. Okay. Okay. What are we giving away? Uh, let's give away uh, what we did say on paper in the last one. Let's uh. Let's give away um, some flake and some uh, flake and some tape. So we'll do the quarter inch tape, eighth inch tape, sixteenth inch, and we'll do a couple packs of a metal flake. We will be putting this thing in a metal flake as well. So, all right, let's go. Randy McKern.
Congratulations. Yeah, just send us your address at info at Limeline Paint Supply. And we'll get you that tape and that metal plate. So hopefully you can use it. All right, so we can kind of just, uh, we'll give we'll give one more thing away when we're all finished up. Uh, but for right now, we'll kind of go over the parts that we have, which this thing's going to be great because you're going to learn a lot from this whole, this whole paint job because not only are we working on plastic, we're working on a fender that's a repop fender, bare metal. So there's going to be different things that we have to do with this. And then we have... Looks like we have factory. Whoa. Wrong. I thought this was factory, and it's actually not. You can see right here it had a different paint job on it. Uh, but uh, we'll test that one. It looks like that's, it looks pretty stable. A couple of chips. Probably don't have to strip that all the way down. The tank. Um, we, we looked at the tank a little bit earlier and we're definitely going to be stripping it all the way down from where it uh, bubbled up. So, uh, the tank, and I have a feeling that this tank has some body work done to it. We'll, we'll, we'll discover that once we get going on it. Um, but it's, it looks to me like it's a little flat right here. Like somebody's done some body work and they've just flattened out a little bit, but, uh, we'll find out. But yeah, that's obviously going to be prepped different than, than some of these other parts. So let's make a material list of what we need, Ash. You can write this down for me. Yeah, I'm ready. So we do need, uh, first and foremost. What are you going to strip it with? Uh, we're going to sand it. When we say strip it, we're going to sand it. The, unless, unless something's been coated over and over and over again, that would be the only time that I would use um, like a spray-on stripper like a paint remover. Um, I would prefer to actually take it and get it sandblasted if that's the case. And that still might happen. Um, I could take it down the road and have somebody that, that sandblasts for us. Uh, that'd be a quick way to get this thing down and start over. So uh, it's definitely a possibility once we get this thing off. But, I'll, but I do plan on just 80 gridding this and to see what the problem is first. So I'm not gonna get carried away with going to get it sandblast now, but if I do find more problems, and there's body work all over the place, I'm just gonna take and get a sandblasted. Or you can strip it. Problem with the stripper is that residue sometimes can um, kind of get into the edges and it could affect your new paint job. And I've had that happen to me a bunch of times. Every time I use it, it just doesn't seem like I can get it all the way off. Uh, so I try to, I tend to stay away from it. I'd rather just sandblast it. Um, so, uh, wax and grease remover is the first thing we're going to need uh, for all these parts. Is this what I'm writing on the list? Yep. Wax and grease remover is going to get rid of any of the oils and the waxes and the contaminants. And, uh, you know, these things are, as you know, if you guys, these, these repop fenders, they're just covered in oil when you get them. Um, so you, you have to douse these things with wax and grease remover. Uh, you can even use uh, you can use lacquer thinner if you had to, but there's other uh, acetone would clean this thing up pretty good. But wax and grease remover will do the job, and that's what you actually need to use for the rest of these parts. So inside and out, underneath, in all the crevices, you need to get all that uh, oil off. So you're gonna need wax and grease remover. Uh, you can buy it in a, in a can, or you can buy it in, a, in an aerosol. It doesn't matter. You're also going to need a waterborne cleaner, which um, just a regular glass cleaner will work. So any kind of a non-scent glass cleaner, you're going to want to get some of that too. So preferably I like it in the, in the aerosol can as well. It's just easy, quick. Uh, you will need some... Oh, right there. You will need some rags. Uh, you can use microfiber rags, or uh, we do sell these on the roll. The, um, the line mine does sell these microfibers on a roll. Love to use these because you're going to need these to be able to clean stuff. Um, the other, as far as sandpaper goes, so that, that'll that get your parts clean. The the glass cleaner will take care of any kind of a bug, any bug guts or any kind of a waterborne contaminant. That's why you want to clean with both of those. 
wax or grease remover gets rid of the oils and the solvents. Um, glass cleaner is going to get rid of any of the waterborne contaminants. Uh, so we are going to need 80 grit. So 80 grit and a DA sander, <coughs> excuse me, 80 grit and a DA sander is the quickest way to be able to get this stripped down. So um, we're going to put this on our list. We're going to get some 80 grit 6 inch DA sandpaper. And then I like to refine those scratches with a 180 grit too. So both the 80 grit and the 180 grit. Just the 25 packs uh, would work fine. We're also going to want to scuff down the metal fender here. So we'll use the 180 grit on that as well. So you can see how nice and you can see how nice and smooth this fender is like when it comes out just from the factory. We're going to want to give that uh, some grit to it to, to help that the primer to stick to it. We're also going to need um, some adhesion promoter. So this is it. We would not need adhesion promoter if we didn't have any plastic. But considering this is a plastic piece, um, you know, whether or not it's been coated, that's a good question. I'm guessing, uh, I don't know. To, to be honest, I always use an adhesion promoter on this considering it's plastic. But there is a chance that it could be okay um, if there is some kind of a spray finish here. But no matter what, we're going to scuff this down. And um, for sure, the inside would need adhesion, plastic adhesion promoter. So you can use um, Sim or Dominion has uh, an aerosol can. But uh, scuff this down and then uh, adhesion promoter before we go to paint. One other thing that's, as far as the sandpaper goes, um, that we probably should have put on our list, is the sanding sponges. The, the green limeline sanding sponges are 600 grit. And then those will allow you to be able to get into these these grooves and stuff like that. So and we'll go over that in the next videos when we go to prep and get these things ready for paint. But uh, not necessary, but those things will speed up the job. And you need to make sure that you're getting all these little areas like in here, all these in here. They need to be uh, scuffed up. Next thing we're going to need... Considering we are, we have a bare metal fender here, we're going to need an epoxy primer. Uh, the epoxy primer is a two part. It's mixed one to one. So it's two quarts uh, sprayable. And, and really the only thing that actually is going to need this epoxy primer is the rear fender for sure. And there's a possibility the tape will need it as well because uh, we're going to end up uh, really getting into this paint and seeing what problems we have. And there's a chance that we're going to be burning through into metal. Um, and worst case scenario is it's going to get sandblasted and we're going to need to coat the whole thing with that epoxy primer. Now, epoxy primer is going to do a couple of different things that the regular sandable primer um, can't do. Uh, some of the things that epoxy primer can do is it's it's an epoxy primer. It's going to stick really, really well, uh, especially if your parts are clean like they should be and they're kind of scuffed up. That epoxy primer is going to, um, it's going to stick to its name. It's, it's an epoxy. And we all know epoxies are, are uh, that's what they're for. Um, and it's also a, a sacrificial, uh, epoxies, they're known to be a sacrificial kind of a primer. Um, so it'll sacrifice itself before the corrosion of the metal. Uh, and it's just, uh, it's one of the best ways to really seal off and to protect the metal from corrosion. Do you need it? You can get away with, uh, with a regular uh, urethane sandable primer direct to metal. As long as it's direct to metal, you can also spray that on top. And uh, just so you know, it's not going to have all of the chemical or not the uh, corrosion properties that the epoxy is going to have. So... Um, we're going to use the epoxy on this and we're probably going to use it on the tank as well. We got that written down? Yeah. With okay. the epoxy, is there an induction time they asked? Uh, no induction time on the, on the epoxy. No. Yep. It's written down. Okay. Um, the, 
the epoxy primer will need once it's dry. You can you can you can do a wet on wet. So you could spray the epoxy and then you could spray the, the sandable primer over the top. Uh, either way is fine. Um, I would prefer to just let the epoxy dry the next day, come in, scuff it down, and then apply your uh, regular sandable primer. So um, you want to write that down? We will also need the sandable primer. Maybe I have a can I can show them. Oh. I threw my last can away. What the heck? Sorry about that. But we do have a uh, urethane sandable primer. So that way we are we're able to, to layer another coat of primer over the top. And that's going to allow us to be able to um, sand things smooth. The, the, the urethane primer is a high build. Um, it's also designed to be sanded. If you're trying to do the same thing with epoxy, the epoxy is just not going to build and it's not going to sand like you want it to. Um, it dries rock hard. And uh, so that's the, that's when a, uh, urethane primers come into play. We're able to build up um, some thickness there and we're able to cut it down to, to make the surface smooth. So whether it's not smoothing out little areas or just covering up uh, sand scratches would be the other thing. Mr. C said, add beers for Ashley. You getting beers now? That's on the list. All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, now after we have the, uh, after the primer dries, we're going to need to sand it with something. Um, and we're going to need 600 grit. So you want to put that on our list? 600 grit sanding sponges? Yeah, actually, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and use just the black uh, silicon carbide. So we're just going to use, I don't know if you've guys seen it, and we're going to get into all of this in, into more detail and more depth. Um, just kind of try to give you the overview of the stuff that we do need. But um, uh, we can, uh, 600 grit will sand that smooth and, and we're, we're good to go at that point. I'm trying to think of what else we need. That's going to get us to that point. Um, Jay said this is nice. He wishes to have a secretary like me taking notes for him. He's working on a garage. There you go. Add, well, add, add, please add espresso to the list too, please, they said. <laughs> so, um, and, and then if we knew our base color, we could also uh, put that on the list, but we're not really sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to metal flake this thing, um, but I'm going to, but it could go a completely different way. I am not sure yet, so. Um, but that's going to get us going. I'm trying to think real quick. Let me clear my mind. Wax and grease remover, water-based glass cleaner, preferably yes. an aerosol, microfiber fiber towels, 800 grit, 6 inch DA sandpaper. Hold on. That's 80 grit, actually. We need 80 grit. 80 grit. We use 80 grit. It's more aggressive. We need to be able to uh, be able to pull this paint off. And we're going to use DA paper because we want to use a machine to do it because it would just take too much time to do this by hand. 180 grit sandpaper. Yep. Uh, 600 grit sanding sponges. Yep. Adhesion promoter. For the fairing, yep. Uh, epoxy primer. For yep. the rear fender and maybe the tank. Sandable primer. 600 grit black carbine sandpaper. Yep. I don't even think you need the reducer yet either because everything so far um, wouldn't require the reducer. Uh, the only other thing I could think of is on this front fender here, there is double-sided tape. There's a chance that we could need um, we could need a, what? oh, what's that stuff that takes off the adhesive? Remover? The adhesive remover. We need adhesive. What was I saying? I don't know. Adhesive adhesive remover. Do you need tack rags and gloves? Uh, yeah, you really don't need the tack rags um, right now. I, uh, it's not necessary to really tack rag before primer. Gloves. Gloves. You do need gloves. And possibly an uh, adhesive, adhesion remover. Adhesive remover. Why can't I say that? I don't know. Goo gone. Goo off. Goo off. Goo gone. Yeah, that would work. Or 3M has the, the best. Oh, it's right here. Look at this. Uh, 
general purpose adhesive remover. So, yeah, if not, you can just, if you don't have it, you can just borrow mine and then uh, <laughs> just give it back. <laughs> a respirator. You do need a respirator. Yes, very good. You should always have a respirator. Always have a respirator. You should already have that when you first started. And that's saying you're going to need a paint gun, um, 1.4, 1.3. It's going to need a compressor and a hose. But I think that that's really, uh, that would really complete the list of what we would need in order to get it uh, primered and sanded and ready in the booth for base color. So um, if you're a painter and you know you're gonna do this and you're gonna do more than one job, um, if you don't have black base coat, you know, get a quart black base coat and some urethane reducer. You're gonna use it all the time. Um, candies and stuff like that. But we'll talk about a little bit more about the paint list that we're gonna need to get once I actually decide uh, what the heck I wanna be doing on this thing, so. You were going to show them the compressor. Oh, yeah. And then Just we're going to spin them. the wheel again. And we'll spin the wheel. So why you show them the compressor, think of what they're going to win. Okay. Let's uh, let's give away a paint gun. I like to do that at the, at the end. Which one? Uh, let's give away a... Uh, let's just give away a good one. 1.4. We'll give away the pro gun. Somebody's going to be happy. Okay. You show them that first while they all hashtag Okay. Lime. Okay. Hashtag Lime. So I did build this little, uh, it's just, we just kind of built it onto our stairs. So it's not so damn loud. Okay. So as far as the pump goes, this is what's important right here. See, there's a pump right here. And you can't see? Can I hold it? No. What can't you see? I don't know. You're wiggling, so then you can't really see it. When you're trying to show it, you're, you're off. Hey, I just can't see. There's a pump right there. And there's a pump right there. So it's a, it's a, two, it's a, a dual stage is what it's called. And the reason why you know, like, there is oilless compressors as well. So this one has the motor, and it has the pulley that runs the pump. So if you see this little guy right here, that's what you're going to want. And then um, if you're really serious and you're painting cars and stuff, you're going to want to make sure it has the double pumps. And... Not really sure what gallon that is. Let me see what it says here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Fifty gallon? I don't know what that is. But that's what that's that runs this shop. Pretty much anything I need to do, this keeps up. Okay. Okay. Cool. We got our list together. We're we're looking good. Okay. So I spin the wheel. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Good luck, guys. Sand squid. Sand squid 06. You did it. You won it. Congratulations. Info at climblindpaintsupply.com and you will win you won that uh, 1.7. Huh? Or 1.4. We do have 1.7 coming out though. <laughs> you just tipped them off on something. Oh man, that was supposed to be a secret. Yeah, you weren't really. It's actually gonna be 1.8. 
Did I just freeze? Nope, you're moving now. Oh, okay. Congrats <laughs> on winning on the on the leap year today. On the leap year. Just so y'all know, I made him watch Princess Bride. He said it was dumb, and he fell asleep. <laughs> so he's no longer our friend because of that. Uh, I liked Andre the Giant. No, you didn't like the movie. I thought he was cool. You said it was not a good movie. I was glad to see him. But no, I didn't. I create, I don't consume, Ashley. That's what's, uh, I don't know. Inconceivable, <laughs> Josh wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch it that far. That was actually, I like that part. <laughs> Perfect timing, Josh. He just doesn't even know. It's, it's inconceivable. He don't even know what's good. Okay, that guy actually made it pretty good. That, that, okay. But anyways, that's it. Uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, next week we'll start the, the prepping process with this. We'll we'll use the materials that we talked about. Um, uh, keep an eye out on the members page because I'll go ahead and post the uh, list of materials that we talked about that we needed. Um, and you're going to post the orange and black bike. Yes, like I will this. ask. I will if ask you pictures them. for that. But that's it. That's it. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for being here. Yeah. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.